Ready. All right, so here we're um, with this great pack of dogs, some Weimaraners and Labrador mixes. And um, when I first got here, they were very, very animated. Um, barking, ouch, jumping up. She's a puppy. Um, there, and I just waited for them all to sit. And what we want to do today is really establish a lot of rules and structure. So we didn't have a lot of rules in place. And what we want to do is start to establish that. So we gave um, rules such as no furniture for a minimum of 30 days or until the behavioral problem resolves. So no furniture until the dogs are acting in a way that you want them to act. That might mean that some dogs get privileges to be on the furniture quicker than others. So say Maggie it has really calm energy. She already comes over and sits or lays down for attention. She might be one of the first dogs, just using our explain consequences to disagree. Um, and she might be one of the first ones. So then remember, it's only furniture with permission. So every time they come over and they want to be on the couch or on the, uh, a seat with you, ask them to sit first. Over time, they'll probably come over automatically, start sitting to ask for attention, and then say up. You want to label this with a command. And then if they were to get off of the couch on their own, they don't get to just jump back up on the couch afterwards. They have to always make sure that um, you're getting, you're giving them permission each and every single time. The next one is making sure that the dogs are sitting before they're going in and out of the doors. That's really important because it's going to help them build self-control over time. And when they go outside, they're not going to be so riled up. The energy level they have before they go through the door will be the energy they bring outside. So if they're really anxious, really worked up, a lot of energy, when they go outside, they're gonna just be racing around and that's where some of the disagreements between, oh, disagreements between some of the dogs is, is when they go from being indoors to outdoors. Remember that leadership um, is really flexible with dogs, so going outside might be a whole different leadership uh, rank order than when they're indoors. So that's a lot of times where there can be conflict when going from different rooms or going indoors to outdoors. Okay, we also worked on how to help foster um, have a positive relationship with the little dog Scooter that lives primarily upstairs. I would suggest practicing this a couple times a day if possible, but make sure when you're practicing using the counter conditioning method that you see in the video above, that you are you have enough people, at least two people there to help make this a controlled setting. Also, I'd encourage you to have all the other dogs outside because we're using treats. Their energy will bounce off of each other. So to help foster not start to posture and intimidate the smaller dog, we wanna use a good treat reward to help him make that positive association. So make sure all the other dogs are outside. And I practice this as many times as you can when the foster uh, scooter comes down the stairs. If you don't have enough help to work on this counter conditioning, I would encourage you to just put them in the other room so that we don't have any negative experiences while you're building this positive relationship. So again, practice this as much as you can um, and make sure you give a lot of good treat rewards um, to encourage this good behavior. The next thing that we um, did is make sure we got, went through a structured feeding ritual and we're going to ha reward the dogs that have the best behavior. Sit. Um, the dogs that have the best behavior get to eat first. So that means that Maggie, she's the one of the best dog, she got to eat first. And you're going to use the escalating consequences and if you forget what those are, you can look um, on the Dog on Problems website, go to training tips, go to the search bar on the right hand side and type in escalating consequences and you'll find a bunch of videos on that specifically. But you'll be using the escalating consequences to disagree with the dogs and keep, use this invisible boundary that we set in the kitchen to the dining room area and you're going to keep the, um, the dogs behind that barrier until you give them permission to eat. And some dogs that have um, similar behavior get to eat at the same time. So you can be a judge of that over time, who can eat when and what you wanna reward, okay? The other thing that's going to be really important over the next couple of days especially is to not give any attention to your dogs when they're doing the demand barking. That will be hard and challenging, I know, but it will start to extinguish if you don't reward it. And again, even saying no and getting upset with them is some type of attention. And so if you ignore it, they, and then you give them attention for something you do want, like they say they stop barking for a couple, for about a minute, call them over, ask them to sit, and then give them attention. So they, he, they start to learn, oh, barking doesn't get me what I want anymore. It doesn't work. But what does work is coming over and sitting down. So we're going to be ignoring that, that the demand barking and encouraging manding, which is coming over and sitting to ask for attention. 
Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.